Hey guys, hope everyone's having a great day. I've been thinking about something a bit, so I thought I'd share it with you. And I guess where, what it really has to do with is kind of where you get your information when you're making purchases, such as buying a 3D printer and where that information com comes from and how we scrutinize it. I was reading a blog post on a 3D printing blog and I won't say what the post was, what the blog was, or who wrote it, but I was really surprised by the end of the article I didn't feel like the information that came out of it came from someone who really had enough perspective to be imparting that kind of opinion. And who am I to judge, right? But that was my, as, as a consumer, that was my reaction to it. So I dug a little bit deeper and found out that this particular person who writes for this 3D printing blog doesn't really have a background in 3D printing. They're just a writer. And maybe they have a background in writing about technology, but I think unless you've been in the trenches of 3D printing and have spent those hours uh, trying to level a bed and had those terrible failures and um, spent weeks on some 3D printing project and electronics and you really understand what the demands are of the technology and their consumers and their users, it's just not going to have the same credence or it shouldn't. But the problem is if we're not vetting those sources of information when we're making purchases, then I think we suffer and the industry suffers because people buy stuff that isn't good and then they're left with a bad taste in their mouth and they don't come back for probably a few years if ever. Now, I don't really spend a lot of time reading vlogs and maybe most people don't, but in general, it's important to make sure that the people who we listen to really have the experience to back up their opinions, which is why I spend a lot of time and I've spent a couple years now carefully and slowly trying to build up my experience and my knowledge so that when I make a recommendation, it's something I can stand behind and it holds a little bit of value for you guys. I wanna have so much experience with multi-material printing that when I say this is my pick for the front runner, the person who's really figuring it out, there's something to it. And if someone agrees with me, they can at least feel like, hey, he's looked into this a bit. He spent some time with the competition. He's not just taking a shot in the dark or trying to back up the first person who sent him a product or a 3D printer or whatever. I'm using the Sigma right now. I think they've got a great approach and I'm kind of vetting that. I want to try kind of all the other big players right now. Hopefully eventually the Ultimaker 3, but also Prusa's MMU. And uh, the other one that is really exciting to me is the Palette. And they're really cool people. They've become um, good acquaintances. I'd like to call them friends, but since we've never met or talked on the phone, that's a bit tough. That's kind of what I'm working on. That way, some of my content this year can be more in-depth about some of those other methods, and then maybe by, by the end of the year, I can just stick my stake in the ground and say, if anyone's doing it right and is going to end up on the top of the game with multi-material printing, it is this company. So that's the opinion I'm trying to formula formulate and want to be able to back up with all of the requisite experience. And this is my little rant, my little 3D printing vlog thing that I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope it was somewhat interesting. And even if it wasn't, well, haha, <laughs> you watched it anyway. All right guys, keep on making awesome stuff. Have a good one and there'll be more content coming soon. We'll see you later.